Hello everyone, this is Octavian and welcome back to the Unreal Engine 5 FPS tutorial series by Infima Games. In this tutorial, we're going to be adding casings whenever we shoot with the weapon. This, this one's going to be hopefully pretty short. I don't know exactly though because I haven't recorded it yet, so let's just get right on to it. Now, to add casings, the first thing that we're going to do is naturally we're going to need a casing blueprint. So let's stop playing the game. Let's go to the content browser and then inside of it, I'm going to go to core and I'm going to just right click, find blueprint class, click on actor and then name this BP casing. I'm going to open that blueprint and just drag it right here. Now this blueprint, the only thing we're going to do inside of it is we're going to add a mesh and a projectile movement component. We will use the mesh to display everything that's going on. Just so obviously so we can see the casing so i'm just going to call this casing mesh um, and then we're going to assign the casing mesh which david exported for me uh, you might have also exported it hopefully you do have it otherwise you can also grab the project files in the description aside from this casing mesh which i'm going to go ahead and set as the root i'm going to add a projectile movement component this one's going to make it make the casing shoot out and just move forward really strongly. So if I set the speed on here to something like 1000, it will probably shoot out properly. Let's make sure our casing mesh also has no collision for now, otherwise we might have some issues. Make sure it doesn't have any physics or anything of that sort. We don't need any of that just yet. And compile. One other thing that I've noticed when I was testing for this video, um, is that this casing mesh is very small so you have to make it a little bit bigger for it to be visible so i'm going to go ahead and just make it size 2 for example we can reduce the size later if this is too big okay now we have the casing mesh one other kind of setup -y thing that i'm going to do is i'm going to go to the weapon and we're going to need some place to spawn the casing from in our case that's mostly going to be this ejection port right here so to make a kind of a, a spot from which we can place the thing, I'm going to go to the skeletal mesh for the weapon. And then inside of here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click on grip and I'm going to click add socket. And let's call this ejection. Usually we would call these socket underscore ejection. That's how we do it for all of our assets. And then this is going to be kind of an empty place where we can put things. So I'm just going to go ahead and drag this to the correct position. And then rotate it such that the X axis is the direction we want to shoot out the casing into. Yeah, that seems to be correct. If we need to, we can always mess around with this later. So for now, let's save. We already have the socket. Now we can go back to the weapon you will see if I say add a scene component and parent it to the weapon, I can now choose the socket ejection as one of the sockets. We don't need to do that, so just let's not uh, get into that for now. Okay, so we have the weapon, we have the casing. The only thing we have to do now is spawn the casing whenever we fire. And thankfully, we already have a event that gets called whenever we shoot, which is the event that calls the shooting animation that we did in the last video. So all I'm going to do really is right after playing the shooting animation, I'm going to call the spawn actor from class action right here. This is, as it says, it's going to attempt to spawn a new actor. So we're going to take that. And then for the class, naturally, we're going to use our casing class. Then the spawn transform. And here's what's interesting. I'm going to get the assault rifle. And then the assault rifle, we're going to go get socket transform. So this is going to give us the transform of that socket we created right here. And it is called socket ejection. So you have to make sure you type it exactly the same way. And then we can drag this into the spawn transform. Always spawn, ignore collisions. And then we can just compile, save, and play. And now you see that we are really, we are shooting a casing right there at the top right. It isn't very visible. But we are really spawning it, which is nice. There it is. Now, if you want to spawn it a little slower, the only thing you need to do really is to make its velocity slower. You can see it right there. It's just floating in the air. 
it's going all the way okay so let's uh let's stop that full screen let's go to the casing and then if we go to projectile movement i can change this to something like 600 for example compile and save and then if i shoot now you can see that we can mostly see the casing now this is going through the ground which is why we don't see it on the ground so if you don't want that to happen we're going to need to enable collision so we can go to the casing mesh and then in the collision presets i'm going to go custom not default custom and then inside here i'm going to make sure it blocks pretty much everything except for the pawn mostly because our character is set to be pawn and we don't really want this to collide with the character we can also ignore any traces this is for our line traces we don't really use this or we don't want this to be blocked and then i can compile and save and let's see if it works i don't see it colliding <laughs> it still seems to be clipping interestingly enough okay um well we are technically blocking it oh the one thing you have to do is make sure the collision enabled is set to collision enabled there's a lot of settings right here you only need collision enabled and then we can choose as an object type we can choose whatever we want i'm gonna say world dynamic as you can see actually we are now having it collide with the character which is why we get this really weird effect so we will need to solve that and the way we're going to solve this is very similar to the way we did it with the bullet so whenever we spawn it we're going to add a few ignore actors when moving so this casing we're going to go ignore actor when moving for the casing mesh and the actors it's going to ignore are the following so it's going to be self we're doing this from the weapon so this is going to ignore the weapon which i don't think it has collision so we might not really need this actually so it's not going to need to ignore the weapon what it, what it is going to need to ignore is get player character so this is going to return the player character and it should ignore everything that is inside of that actor and then we also need to make sure that we do that for the player character though i'm not sure it's going to really allow us to do that here um yeah i don't believe it's going to allow us to do that right here so let's just go with this for now Okay, we have less clipping now, and the casings are actually falling properly. But right now, it seems like our particles are colliding with the with the casing. So we need to somehow ignore the particles or ignore the casings whenever we spawn the particles. This is a bit of a weirder thing right here, it seems. Let's uh, Let's figure out how to solve that. Okay, so what seems to be happening is that our casing is colliding with our bullets, which is causing everything to kind of explode in our face. That, that's why we get this effect, and the casing keeps moving. But our bullet just does not shoot out forward. So what we need to do is we need to disable its, its, um, kind of its collision for the bullets. So the way we can do that is, for example, we could go to our bullet. So go to content drawer, bullet, and then inside of here... If I go to sphere and we change this to custom, we can see what object type this is. This is world dynamic. So one thing we could do is we could go to casing and then this is also world dynamic. We don't really want the bullet to ignore other world dynamic things because otherwise it won't collide with kind of um, all the other bullets. So what we could do is make it ignore physics bodies Actually, that might be an issue too, so let's not do that. Let's, for now, first thing, let's make the casing ignore physics bodies and world dynamic. So that will ensure that the casing ignores the bullet. And that will allow us, again, to shoot out bullets and casings. Now, you will notice that the casings are currently getting stuck on the wall. So to fix this, we just need to make them bounce. So if we go to casing, projectile movement, scroll up to the top, you just need to set should bounce to true. That is very important for this to work. And there you go. 
casings bounce now. Now, <laughs> if they bounce a lot, there are ways for you to change this. And there's also a way to make them not kind of get sticky like this. So if you go to casing and then inside here, you can go rotation follows velocity. And then the other thing you can do is you can change their bounciness. So it says right here, one, no velocity lost, zero, no bounce. So for example, if we set this to like 0.3, we should have less bounds. You can see we have less bounds and also they are now rotating according to the ground and according to the velocity. That seems to work pretty well. Okay, so with that, we basically have our casings for this tutorial. The one last issue that I want to resolve in this tutorial, other than, of course, you still need to make sure that these get destroyed after a while. So go to class defaults and then initial lifespan, let's set this to two. That will just make sure they get destroyed after a while. But as I was saying, the one last issue that I really want to fix in this tutorial is that in the past tutorials, we've left a few small bugs. One of them is the fact that we can shoot while running, which looks a little bit weird. And we can also shoot while lowered like this. So let's fix that. They're very quick to fix. So let's just control uh, shift save. And then I'm going to go to the character. And then inside of here, I'm going to add some sort of whenever we try to shoot. So in the event graph, if I search for the input action shoot, whenever we try to shoot, I'm going to check a few things to see if we are allowed to shoot. And we need to do that here because this is kind of the place where we check every time we're going through the shooting fire rate. So we're going to check whether we're running and then I'm also going to check whether we're close to a wall. So we're, to, to be able to run all of this firing thing, we are going to need to also not be running. So not, not be running. We're going to need to not be running and we're going to need to not be close to a wall. And then we're going to drag that in there. And if I compile and save, I hold fire now and I get close to a wall. I won't be able to fire anymore. And then if I run and hold, it won't do anything. And with that, we pretty much fixed the last two small issues that I noticed. In the next tutorial, we're going to be hopefully finally adding the reload functionality and adding a magazine to this weapon because... It turns out that it does not have one and we do have it imported in the project. So we, we should really add the mesh here. So hopefully we'll get right onto that in the next tutorial and I hope I'll see you there.